Hello, what can you do if you have a noisy neighbour, particularly one who plays loud music or shouts and has arguments at night time? I'll cover the best practical steps to take as well as the legal options that are available to you. It's important to remember that you do have a right to complain about noise at any time of day or night, and especially at night between 11pm and 7am. Your local council is responsible for making sure that noise doesn't rise above a certain volume. The first thing you should do is discuss the problem with your neighbour. Try to be as friendly and fair as possible. They might have a good reason for the noise that you weren't aware of, or they just might not have realised that they were being so loud and that it was upsetting you. You should go and talk to them, but if you're not comfortable with a face-to-face -face conversation, you could just as easily write them a letter or send an email. Here, again, if you're not comfortable with them knowing it's from you, you can send the email from a temporary Gmail account with the name of your road or your block of flats. An advantage of putting it in writing is that it corroborates that you're uncomfortable with their behaviour and you've asked them to stop. Hopefully things don't escalate much more than this, but if they do, the email is a useful piece of evidence for you. You could also talk to other tenants in your building or other neighbours. Are they being disturbed by the noise too? If they are, you could all go to your neighbour as a group and ask them to stop. Or again, you could all sign a letter saying the noise is a disturbance. That way, your neighbour might be more likely to see that their noise is upsetting lots of people and quiet down. It's also a good idea to keep a written log. Write down when the noise happens, how long it lasts, what it was, and any other things that might help. That sort of log is a really useful document to show your council or a court if things go that far. One thing to remember throughout the process is that your neighbour might become upset or offended at some point. Though you're well within your right to ask them to stop making too much noise, they might have trouble accepting that they're making too much noise. If they become abusive or even threaten violence at any point, it's important to be sensible and, of course, talk to the police if you feel you're in danger or if your neighbour threatens you. If you talk to your neighbour and the noise continues, the next step is to talk to your landlord if you rent your property. This might be a private landlord, a housing association or your local council. If your landlord is a local authority, they'll go down the formal route which I'm about to describe. If your landlord's a private individual, the chances are they won't do much and you'll need to speak to your council anyway. Your local authority can help you with noise problems. The easiest way to report the noise is on the government website, which will take you to an online complaints form to fill out about your neighbour. The link is in the notes below. All you need to do is fill in your address, your neighbour's address and give details of the noise. Next, the council will take a number of steps for you. First, it'll decide whether the drumming counts as something known as a statutory nuisance. If it is a statutory nuisance, it will issue an abatement notice. If not, it'll issue a warning notice. Statutory nuisance is defined in the Environmental Protection Act 1990, and it includes noise emitted from premises so as to be prejudicial to health or a nuisance. If your council thinks that the noise amounts to a statutory nuisance, it must issue what's called an abatement notice. An abatement notice asks your neighbour to stop making noise at a certain time, and it specifies a time period during which your neighbour has to stop that noise in the future. It can also require your neighbour to carry out any works necessary to prevent the noise happening now or in the future. If your neighbour fails to comply with the abatement notice without reasonable excuse, they can be prosecuted in the magistrate's court and fined up to £5,000. In theory, they can be fined each time they fail to comply with the abatement notice. In reality, one prosecution for one offence normally does the job. Often, the council will decide that the noise is not serious enough to amount to a statutory nuisance. In that situation, they can still issue a warning notice, which is more suitable for a one-off incidence of noise. A warning notice tells your neighbour four things. Number one, that the noise is taking place between 11pm and 7am when certain levels of noise aren't permitted. Number two, the noise they're making probably exceeds permitted levels. Number three, they should reduce the noise from 10 minutes after the notice is served 
until 7 a.m. the next morning. And number four, it'll note the exact time the notice is served. The notice will also tell your neighbour they're at risk of committing an offence if they continue to make too much noise during the period specified by the warning notice. If your neighbour disobeys the terms of the warning notice without a good excuse, they could be given a fixed penalty notice of up to £110, which can increase to £1,000 if not paid promptly. Hopefully your council will be able to resolve the problem for you. As we've seen, they have several options for dealing with noise complaints, but you might not be satisfied with the council solution. What do you do then? Well, you could pay a relatively small amount to bring in a mediator. A mediator isn't necessarily a lawyer, in fact, very often they're not, but they'll provide an unbiased perspective and can talk to you and your neighbour about the consequences of taking your dispute to court. You can also reach an agreement with a mediator present with your neighbour and sign a binding contract that keeps both of you happy. Although a mediator can't impose a solution, they can help keep you and your neighbour out of the courtroom. I've put a link in the notes below to a website which will help you find a mediator in your local area. The other and frankly more extreme option is to engage a lawyer. Now you should think really carefully about this decision because it's far more costly than a mediator and will not solve the problem overnight. Your lawyer will advise you on whether it's actually worth taking your neighbour to court and if so, how you should prepare for court. They'll also send a letter to your neighbour informing them of your intent and the threat of a lawyer might be enough to get your neighbour to stop. Finally, remember that if you become embroiled in a neighbour dispute, you have to declare that dispute to all prospective purchasers if you're thinking of selling your house or your flat. That can make it harder to sell. It can wipe tens of thousands of pounds off the value of your property. And even if you're not planning to sell your home anytime soon, remember your neighbour might be. And the last thing you want to do is something which makes it harder for them to sell. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. We have more videos here on employment law. This is a video I think you might like. And please do subscribe to the channel here. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Bye bye.